laminate furniture gets a bad rap, but it can often be pretty quality stuff, and it's always a great canvas for makeovers. I was expecting the drawers on this dresser to be wood that I could sand down and stain, but my plan didn't quite work out that way, so let's see what I can do with this rundown mid-century style dresser. I picked up this blank box at a yard sale earlier in the fall for a whopping $5, and I'm gonna turn it into something really special. The body of the dresser is a laminate finish, which is basically just a picture of wood grain that's applied over some hardboard or MDF. This is a Canadian made piece with nice dovetail drawers. There are a few damaged spots on the top and the right side panel needs to be reattached, but other than that, it's in really great condition. And don't worry, the original MCM legs are here in the drawer and I've also got all of its amazing original hardware. I started by pulling out all of the drawers and just assessing what they needed. They're all in really nice clean condition, but almost all of them are going to need a new nylon guide on the back. And the two top side drawers are both going to need their joints resecured. Next, I'm gonna give it a really good clean inside and out with some simple green degreaser and warm water to clean off any dirt and old furniture polish residue from the outside and all of the dust that has collected on the inside. I flipped it onto its back so that I could clean out the inside a little bit easier and I noticed that the leg brackets were pretty rusty so I'm just gonna pop those off and I'll clean them up as well. All of the handles and these brackets are going to soak in some vinegar and water to loosen things up while I work on re-gluing the drawers. Hopefully it's obvious this is not the ideal way to apply wood glue to these joints. I grabbed a little artist brush to scoop up some of my mess here and get the glue onto all of the surfaces of the dovetails on both drawers and then wiped up my excess with a shop towel. I put some clamps across the drawers as well just to hold them tight while the glue dried and I took my glue over to fix that loose side panel next. Here I just squished some glue in between the wood frame and the hardboard panel and clamped it down and then I went to find our nailer. I didn't catch it on camera but I just popped some brad nails in where I had glued just to help hold things together and then I filled in all of those little nail holes with some filler. Once everything dried, I put some 150 grit sandpaper onto my sander, sanded all of that filler smooth, and just scuffed up the rest of the shiny slick laminate. This is gonna give my primer and then my paint a much better surface to grip onto. And I can also use my sander here to smooth out any of these surface scratches on the top. I moved on to sand the drawers and I had thought that I was going to strip them all back to the wood underneath and stain them, but then when I started sanding this first drawer, I was very surprised to find that all of the drawer fronts are plywood with that same hardboard and laminate finish. I've worked on a ton of these dressers and the drawer fronts have always been some sort of real wood like elm, maple, or birch underneath but these are not. The only two drawers that do have wood fronts are the smaller side drawers that I re-glued. So time for a little pivot and design change. Now that I've got everything scuff sanded, I'm ready for primer. This is the primer that I've got on hand right now. It's a water-based product from Kills that performs just like an oil or shellac-based product to block odors and stains. I'm not worried about that on this piece, but I do still need to prime for a little extra sticking insurance. 
and to make a nice uniform substrate across the glossy original finish, the porous damage spots that I sanded smooth, and the wood fillers, so that my paint will look even across all of those different surfaces. This primer can be sprayed. I sprayed it on my last piece, but it's really thick and sticky, so I'm just gonna roll it on. I just need one coat of primer, and while that dries, I think my hardware is ready for a scrub. I grabbed some steel wool, and with just a little bit of elbow grease, all of that rust came right off. These will rust up again though, so they'll need a coat of rust inhibiting primer before I put them back on the dresser. The handles got the exact same treatment, but they're only brass plated, not solid brass, so a lot of that nice gold finish came off with the rust. These are going to need a coat of spray paint once they're dry as well. After the primer had had an hour to dry, I went over it quickly with some 400 grit sandpaper to knock back any of the roller texture that was left in it, wiped up my sanding dust, and then got set up to paint. I am on a mission to use up the paint that I have had in my collection for too long. So today's choice is this Oxford Navy chalk paint from Annie Sloan. Annie is the OG chalk paint, which has this incredibly lush, thick consistency. I gave it a really thorough stir since it's been sitting in here for a while. And then I poured some out into a separate container so that I could thin it out with some water for spraying. Once I had the paint just a little bit thicker than whipping cream, I'd say, I strained it into my pneumatic spray gun, pulled out my air hose, and slapped on my respirator. As I was spraying this first coat, I wasn't really loving the spray that I was getting. It was really splattery and not flowing out of the gun as fine or as well as I would hope. This happens every so often when I haven't cleaned out the sprayer well enough in between projects. So I decided to finish up this coat and I'll have to break down the gun and give it a really good spa day. I turned on my box fan to keep the air moving out in the garage and help the paint dry for about two hours. And when it was dry, I did need to go back over everything with some more of my 400 grit sandpaper to smooth it out and fix all of that splattered texture. In the interest of time, I decided to just swap guns so that I could get this project finished. So I poured my paint into a backup gun that I have and then just continued on with my second coat.
since this is a really porous chalk paint, I do need to seal it up for some protection. Give it a little bit of a sheen and make it really easy to clean and look after for its new owner. So today I'm using this bare satin water-based polyurethane. And since I'm working with a really rich dark color, I'm going to tint my poly with a little bit of the paint. It's really hard to get a solid streak free finish over dark colors like this. So tinting the poly will really help me avoid that. I added my blue poly to my spray gun and sprayed on my first coat. This is a lot thinner in consistency than my paint, so I probably should have adjusted the material flow and the pressure settings on my gun to avoid all of this overspray mist. I'll make sure that I do that for my second coat. After drying for another two hours, I sand it again with my 400 grit to remove any dust and fluff that had landed in my first coat and sprayed on a second coat before I left it all to dry overnight. I still need to deal with these legs and since they're the only real wood part of this dresser, I'm thinking sanding them back and restating them is a good choice. I used some 120 grit to get through this brown paint and then some 180 grit just by hand to smooth that out. And then I stained them with some of this early American stain. The next morning I laid out a clean towel so that I could put my freshly painted drawer fronts down and attach all of these new nylon guides and then I screwed all of the handles back in place. After reattaching the cleaned up brackets to the bottom, I sealed the legs with some furniture wax and screwed them back into place as well. And here is my finished dresser, looking quite dapper if I do say so myself. I think this rich navy color and the original hardware give it a really handsome new look that still has all of that mid-century character intact. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel for tons more furniture flipping inspiration. If you want to watch another cool flip, you can check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching today and I will catch you all next time.